So I want to talk today about wedges and more importantly the difference between low and high bounce wedges. So I have two very different wedges here. They're both lob wedges. This is a uh, Titleist Vokey SM9 58 degree 12 degree bounce D grind. And here we have a Cleveland 588 3 degree bounce 60 degree wedge. So they're both lob wedges. Um, first starting just with bounce. What bounce is, is if you hold the club neutral you can see the trailing, the lead edge and the trailing edge, and you'll see the slant, basically that offset. So the higher bounce wedge here has much more of a uh, camber going down, and that's meant to, for turf interaction, to allow bounce just off of it. Uh, this is a three degree, and from here, there is very little uh, camber and difference between the leading edge and the back edge here. Three degrees is really low, so this is kind of a really good comparison to see the difference between the two. Now, um, for a high bounce, typically the player that's going to benefit from this is someone who has a steep angle of attack. And a good way to think about this is, what does your divot look like? Do you take uh, you know pretty deep, aggressive divots? A lot of times, a high bounce wedge is going to be good for you because it's meant to keep that club from digging and you know potentially catching the ball fat it's going to give you a chance to when you're getting down the ground to not just sink in and dig it's going to stay up and allow you to hopefully get cleaner contact if you have a deep aggressive swing and the opposite of that is for someone who's uh, maybe likes to sweep the ball with a full swing a lower bounce club is going to be a little bit better because it's going to allow you to make clean contact if you're just sweeping it it's not going to uh, really have too many turf interaction issues. It's going to very nicely just graze the top of the grass and go through nice and smooth. The, the big thing is that's kind of talking about full swings. And probably one of the most important things to really think about with wedges is a lot of our wedges we're not actually hitting with a full swing. And to me that's where bounce matters a lot. It's around the greens and that's why specifically I have lob wedges here because as you'll see in the next parts of the video, depending on the turf, and uh, you know the, the hardness of the turf, how tight the lie is, bounce really makes a big difference when you're chipping around a green. So that's where I'm gonna show you in this next video the biggest things to consider. Um, right off the top of the bat, really what you wanna also think about, aside from full swings, and lob wedges a lot of times we're probably not hitting full swings, is what is your course conditions like? I live in Arizona, it's 100 degrees out and it's just starting to get in summer, so our courses, uh, they tend to be pretty firm. The fairways even, around the green, uh, thinner lies. Low bounce tends to help there. Even if you are a digger, especially just hitting short shots around the green, low bounce tends to work well. Where if you live, you know, maybe you're in Canada or you're somewhere on the northeast where it's a lot, uh, you know, wetter conditions, softer conditions, high bounce might be good for a lob wedge around there. So really your course conditions are going to play a lot and we'll see that uh, in the upcoming parts of this video. This is the first test we're going to do. This is a very tight, very hard lie. Um, the ground there, I could bounce a golf ball and catch it. So the uh, low bounce wedge should do pretty well here. And I think one thing you'll notice is, watch the ball flight. It tends to be a little bit higher. And that's because with a low bounce wedge on really hard, uh, hard pan like that, the ball is able to kind of get up on the face a little bit higher because the club's not bouncing up into it. So you hit a little higher on the face so you can get a little bit higher ball flight. So this is with the high bounce wedge and you'll kind of see, I've, that one I kind of bounced it into it because it will bounce off this hard ground. But in general, the ball flight's kind of low because I'm hitting a lot of these shots off like the bottom one or two grooves. So you're gonna see that and that's kind of one of the hard challenges with a high bounce wedge on a really hard pan lie is it tends to want to bounce into the club. So this is a shot I would normally not even try on the course with either of these wedges. This is an open face, you know, try to hit it high off a very tight, very, very hard lie. Um, I would not even try this on the course, but it's worth the test. And you can see the low bounce doing pretty well because again, it's not gonna bounce up and skip into the club. Um, really important to kind of know what bounce will do for you on, on certain lies. So if it's really, really hard, low bounce is probably gonna be easier to hit. And this, so a high bounce club, tight lie, hard pan, open face. And a little long again, 
I'm try I'm actually trying really hard. I'm I'm actually hitting down on this a lot, just trying to keep myself from sculling it because the club wants to bounce up into it and I'm still hitting these on like the bottom one or two grooves which is why they're going a little bit long and then I kind of figured it out on that last one and counteracted it a little. So we're going to test these wedges out of some rough and I'm just dropping it trying to give myself some kind of random lies. One of the things I want you to notice though with this low balance wedge is the height. It's pretty high. It is a 60 degree wedge while the high bounce one is 58. One of the things you'll just kind of notice though, with a higher bounce wedge, you'll, it'll actually tend to cause you to hit it a little lower on the face, which is a lower trajectory with some spin. So it is something to note, even out of the rough, uh, I just, I, I can actually feel it. I hit the ball a little bit. For me, it feels like more middle of the face out of the rough. I get a little bit higher, softer ball flight. And we have the high bounce here. You can just kind of see it just comes out a little bit lower. Again, it is a 58 degree wedge, but there, it's not that big of a difference. You can I can feel on this, the ball tends to go off the bottom lower grooves of the club. That one worked out okay. And then this is why I make YouTube videos and don't play for a living. So in the sand, a general rule is bounce is the person's friend. It just helps you kind of get through the sand more. Um, conditions matter though. So if you look at this sand, it is not what I would describe as fluffy. It's actually kind of thick and heavy and a lot of times there's not a lot of sand in some of the bunkers out here. So low bounce is actually sometimes not a bad option. This is my gamer wedge so I'm quite used to it and I'm comfortable hitting it out of bunkers. So this high bounce wedge, this would be really helpful, especially with really fluffy sand traps, like in Northern California, places like that. For me, I just bounced one into it because I tend to hit really close to the ball because I'm used to that, and it just rocketed into it. But for really fluffy sand traps, a high bounce wedge is definitely going to be your friend. So we've seen there's a difference in playability between a low and a high bounce wedge, especially depending on the conditions. They, they do perform differently. So what I really want to talk to you about is maybe a good way to set yourself up so you have some diversity. So I live in Arizona. Again, in the summertime especially, most of the courses here, they're pretty firm. But I do go play some of the courses at the casinos around here. Those courses are in amazing shape even in the summertime. They're soft fairways. So it doesn't necessarily make sense for me just to have all low bounce wedges. And I think that's a really important thing to think about is most players have you know, typically four wedges in their bag, whether it's a pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge. That gives you the chance to be able to add some different types of clubs in there so you have a little bit of versatility. So you can copy what a lot of the best players in the world do that play for a living on the PGA Tour. You will notice that often their sand wedge has higher bounce and more, most commonly, they have a low bounce lob wedge. And again, that's probably just for those, they're using it around the greens a lot and they like to be able to make sure they can get ball first and get under it. Um, but they, they give themselves that versatility. So if they are at a course where it's really soft, you know, they might just take their sand wedge and even if they have to open the face a little bit, they have the bounce there to help them get through it. Or if it's really soft bunkers, they have a club that has high bounce but then they also have a club that has low bounce. So they're giving themselves the versatility to play a lot of different shots. And I think that that's something you should really consider. Figure out you know, what, what you want to use that wedge predominantly for. And then don't think that all your wedges need to match in terms of their bounce. In reality, it's probably better that you have them set up a little bit different in terms of bounce so you have more versatility. I hope that helps you and please like and subscribe.